Hello, this is the Ramblings of an Indisciple Mind podcast for Tuesday, November 22nd, I think, 2016. Uh, so what I thought to talk about today is uh, we just got back from visiting uh, Port Huron, Michigan, which is northeast of here. It is a border point uh, between uh, Michigan and Canada, Canada. Uh, when we've used upon occasion. Um, and the reason we went there was because we decided after going to Sigler Fest and, and after deciding to go back to Sigler Fest that we would, uh, it probably made sense to look at the TSA pre-check program. So in case you don't know what that is, that's a program where you pay, I think it was $85 for five years and you go through a pre-screening process and you get a number assigned to you. And then what happens is you get to go through the TSA pre-check lines where you don't have to take your laptop out of your bag. You don't have to take your shoes off. Um, I don't think you have to take your belt off. I'll have to look and see what exactly. Oh, you know, it's a little bit easier. Less people going through the line, obviously. And uh, so it kind of smooths your way through. Now, what we notice as we were looking for, for how to apply this, is there's also this thing called the Global Entry Program, which is, um, I think it was 115 for five years, again. Uh, and that would give you kind of the same kind of access for inbound customs to the United States with the TSA pre-check added in. So you got both. And we thought, well, incremental cost-wise, that probably makes the most sense. So we went ahead and applied for that. We applied for it like a week or so later. Uh, you know, they got this little web portal you set up an ID for, and that's where you do the, the, the initial application. And, um, and then uh, you, you have to wait, and you get uh, pre-approved, assuming, assuming you get through that step. And we did. We got a notification, email notification a couple weeks later that we've been pre-approved and we have to set up our in-person interview with somebody from the custom service. So we set that up for today and we did that, uh, we did that mainly because uh, we both had today off. So we could take the time because none of the, the only places where you can go were places where the U.S. Customs has an office. So that's basically like downtown Detroit or Port Huron. Uh, and I think there were one or two others in the area, but none of them were convenient to us. All of them were at least half an hour's drive, if not more. Uh, Port Huron actually ended, is about an hour for us. We did that, we chose Port Huron partially because we have friends in Port Huron and we were hoping to get together with them for lunch and we did, so that was a nice thing. But we went to go and, 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 and um, get, get to this place. And we had, you know, the wife was using Google directions. And we got, we got there and she's like, okay, so we got to turn, we got to look for a street name, which I never saw a sign for the street name. Said, oh, so Google says it's right here. Well, the only thing was, was this light and a turn off with a sign that said Bridge to Canada. And I was like, <sighs> really leery about, about going down this way. Um, but that's where Google seemed to be sending us. And, and, and you know, so as we're approaching this, we'd just gone under um, just like a freeway overpass kind of thing. Uh, we'd gone under it. So that was like the beginning of the incline for people to go, because there was a bridge there between Michigan and Canada called the Blue Water Bridge. This is the beginning of the incline to get to the point where they can get on, on the bridge it's going to go over um, uh, a section of the water there, and it's pretty high. So they start that. So it's like it's just a freeway overpass kind of kind of deal there. You drive under, and then it's immediate left turn, and you see Brits to Canada. So we turn down this road, and I'm like, no, this was this was a mistake because I'm seeing signs for the tolls to go to Canada. I'm just like, we don't have time. It's like 20 minutes before the first appointment. My appointment was at 11. The wife was at 11:15. We didn't have time to go to Canada and come back. N nor did we need to go to Canada and come back. Um, 
we did this once where we went to Canada for absolutely no reason because of a mistake, and maybe I'll share that story someday, but I don't think I'll share it today. So we turn into the duty free, and we're like looking at the directions that they gave us, and we're like, all right, what do we do? You can't get out of the duty free lot, not surprising. You can't get out of the duty free lot anyway, except to go back on this road, which is one way. So we basically had a choice: go the go the correct way and go to Canada, or maybe go the other way and not go to Canada. I don't want to really incriminate myself, but we did not go to Canada. <laughs> so I'll let you, you know, somehow we, we disassembled our car and recreated outside of the duty free area. I don't know. You figure out how we did it. We did not go to Canada. So, but as we were uh, leaving the Canada area, we noticed that right next, so you basically had the bridge, you had the bridge, and then you had a little space and then you had this road to the, to, to, to the bridge, to get on the bridge. Well, that little space, that's a parking lot <laughs> with a chain link fence. And so after we got turned around and came back at another, you know, as we were not going to Canada, I noticed this lot and I'm like, this has got to be it. But we had to go turn around and whatnot. So we went and turned around. And I pulled into that lot because uh, it did have a customs thing. It had some other signs that were actually on the fence. They weren't terrible. Unless you were looking like right at it, they weren't terribly visible. And we, we pulled in there. And yes, this was the right place to be. And we knew that because there was a door with an address above it. The problem was it was built into the side of the Frinkin overpass there that's heading up to the bridge. So where if you're like passing a freeway overpass and you would see like pillars and then just like usually some, some concreted surface that's on an angle, that was the office. It was inside of that. So and coming, we were coming from the opposite direction. So there's no clue that, hey, behind this concrete wall are a bunch of customs people. So, but you know, we're still in time for our appointments. We're still early, actually. So we're it's we're okay, and and I hadn't received any kind of official document, if you get what I'm saying. And uh, so we went in the building, and uh, it's kind of funny because you walk in the building, and the first thing is you just got this. It's kind of your typical government. You get this. Uh, normal utilitarian hallway and it's on a, it's, it's on an angle you probably like go up 10 feet you're know, going up this ramp and then you take an elevator up to the second floor um, and as you get there then they're like no cell phones there's all these signs no cell phones so you had to turn your cell phone off it's like you could have told me that before but you didn't so uh, and we get in there and we've got to sign in so we sign in and and then some of these customs a couple of customs officers are explaining to us how the program works. They've got a document that we can take home and, and read through, but they are talking us through it. And, and then this officer says something, and, and these are Canadian customs officers, which is interesting. I mean, we were in the US, we're still in Michigan, but these are Canadian customs officers. I'm not certain, I'm not 100% certain if we had if we even talked to a U.S. customs officer. I couldn't really make out the, the patch on the shoulder of the woman that did the, the eventual thing with me. But uh, So they took our passports, they took our driver's licenses, and I'm assuming they let me copies of that or they entered it into a computer somewhere. We're actually, all that information was already in the computer as part of what we had to put in when we, when we initially applied. Uh, and then and then we had the interview, which, you know, you kind of, I don't know, I was kind of envision, envisioning, you know, you're brought into a room and, <laughs> you know, there's, there's uh, Agent Smith going, Mr. Anderson, <laughs> or something like that, probably a customs agent, but not, not even, it was a lot closer to going, a combination of going to the DMV and, um, being asked security questions, security questions at the airport, uh, because this one woman called me up, 
and they had a, a chair to sit in and they had a white backdrop. She said, let's take your picture first. So it sat me down, I you know, showed me the candle, camera, I could smile into it if I wished. I did my usual. <sighs> Poor job, probably. I haven't seen the picture yet. And then, and then you know, she, she asked me a number of questions, such as, um, have I ever, ever been fingerprinted before? Because one of the things they do is they fingerprint you. I'll get to that in a second. Um, have I ever, ever been fingerprinted before? The answer was no. Have I ever been convicted of a felony or any serious criminal charge? And the answer was no. Have I ever been um, acquitted or, no, it wasn't acquitted. It was pardoned. Have I ever been pardoned for a serious criminal charge and a felony? And the answer was no. And I think there were a couple other, you know, when was the last time I was outside of the United States? Um, you know, so kind of things like that. I mean, nothing, nothing too strenuous. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing was like, oh my gosh, you know, whatever. You know, they didn't ask about, you know, when was the last time I got a ticket or any, you know, for, for traffic violation or anything like that. It was mainly like, are you a felon? Um, when was the last time you were out of, out of the States? Um, and I think that was pretty much the topic of that. And, and then, and then that was it. She's like, okay, you're all set. And then I had to wait for, for the wife cause she was, her, you know, her time was about after me. So they were actually already talking to her by the time uh, I was sitting down and uh, they asked her basically the same stuff. And uh, I actually learned something I didn't know about her. She had gotten fingerprinted before for a bank job. I did not know that. Or if I knew it, I forgot it. The fingerprinting was kind of cool because you know it's, it's no longer a case of putting black ink on your fingers and then put your fingers on paper they've got a little box there with a, that's a scanner um and it's probably like a four by four box say and they would have you put your your fingers down if you put all your fingers together just counting the thumb together and then just lay that flat and press on it they would do the left the right hand and then the left hand and then they had you do your thumb, thumb separately together uh, so we did that um, and, and then we were free to go. So we were there, well, we were like done. We were walking out at 1118. We were there about a half an hour total, but we were also early. So if we'd just shown up right on time, it would have been, you know, we would have been there 20 minutes. So, which is kind of what I was hoping. I was, you know, if they're, they're scheduling stuff in, in 15 minute increments, I thought this must, you know, click over pretty well, but it is a government, a government thing. So you never know. Yeah, these guys are, I mean, they're customs, but they're, uh, you know, they all had guns. I mean, this wasn't like, it certainly isn't, isn't like, wasn't like intimidating and scary, but at the same time, it's like, you know, these are people that are doing a real job and they've got real power. And, you know, so, you know, turn your cell phone off and you follow the rules and be polite and, and whatnot. And, and then we were um, waiting for the people that were meeting uh, for lunch and we were happening to go to a Cracker Barrel. So the wife and I were kind of, kind of looking around in the little general store area outside the Cracker Barrel while we're waiting for, the, for our friends to show up. And I got an email that I, that my status had changed. So I got on the little website portal on my phone and approved. So we get a card in a couple weeks and then we can, as we fly and, and if we are driving, there's actually for coming into the States, there's actually a, a, um, a, a special lane we can use for customs that should hopefully get us through faster. So, so that would be cool. That would be cool. So yeah, I'm looking forward to using it and, and uh, using the perks that my money is, has bought me kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, that was my thing for today. Um, if you're traveling a lot, I have a feeling it's going to be well worth the money, uh, especially the TSA portion. I don't, you know, we, we've got, well, like for this year, we're talking about going to going on a cruise. I, I'm, did I mention that? I may mention that. So I'm certainly expecting that when we come and that'll take off out of, out of Vancouver. So when we come back in, we'll get to use that. But the TSA thing, I think is the thing we're gonna get a lot of use out of this year. So that'll be very, very nice. But that's really all I got to talk about today. I will, should be back tomorrow. Um, and I'll be talking to you then. So be seeing you.